Hello, 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 hello. Thank you all very much for coming. My name is Adam Osborne, and I'm here to present to you the future. I know most of you probably haven't heard of me. Who's this Adam Osborne character? Well, those who think you've heard of me think I run a company called Oscorp and spend my evenings fighting Spider-Man. Um, I do run a company. It's called Osborne Computing. Uh, and you'll be happy to hear that the supervillain life is not for me, so I don't fight Spider-Man and I don't run Oscorp. I'm here to usher in a new age of technology as we know it and a new age of personal computing. So let me tell you a story. Meet this lovely fellow right here, Grandpa Joe. Now, Grandpa Joe is very, very old. He's about 500,000 years old, in fact. Um, but despite his age, which he looks very good for his age, by the way, um, he was pushing technology forward even back in his day. Now, how is this possible? Well, Grandpa Joe lived in an age called the Stone Age. The Stone Age was very, very tough time. Um, Grandpa Joe and his kind, Homo sapiens, were not yet at the top of the food chain, so they had to fight their way up, but in order to do that, they had to knock the other animals at the top of the food chain down to the bottom, animals like the tiger. So, in order to do this, they had to, um, fight, and probably not with their bare hands, because the tiger would probably win a bare knuckle fight. So Grandpa Joe took to using rocks. He started pummeling the tigers with the rock. Um, not a very effective method, because I don't know about you, but um, I can't pummel anything if I'm not within arm's reach of it. So, and tigers have very sharp claws. I don't know if you've ever examined a tiger's claws, but they are very sharp. And so, not a very effective method. Then, Grandpa Joe got the idea to start throwing the rocks at the tiger. Um, again, not a very effective method, because what if you miss? Well, then you're down a rock. You still have the tiger, but you don't have a rock. And the idea of that coming at you with you having nothing to defend yourself, that's a very scary idea. So, yeah, not a very effective method. Fast forward a little bit, Grandpa Joe got the idea to start sharpening stones. And he started putting the stones on the end of sticks. This became known as what we know nowadays as the spear. This was a very effective method because if you miss, you still have the stone. It's still on the end of your spear. And you can attack at range. So it kind of, it's kind of the best of both worlds. The tiger can't get you with his claws because you're out of range, and no matter what you do, you still have the rock. So, fast forward, like, about 500,000 years, those sticks with stones at the end of them are now made of steel and iron, and they're used by these guys, spines. Fast forward even more, those sticks, or those um, sticks of steel and iron start becoming obsolete, they start being replaced by guns. Every piece of technology in the world goes through the same cycle, the cycle of evolution, the cycle of replacing the old with the new. Let's look at a few examples. In 1908, this beast rolled off the assembly line, the Model T, all right? So the, this was a great piece of machinery, no one's refuting that, but if you saw this driving down the street, Nowadays, you would probably turn up an eye, wouldn't you? Um, this is more along the lines of what we use today. So again, same process, process of evolution. The Model T got phased out in favor of something more modern. Let's look at another example. Phones. Now, back in the day, this is what you would see on a typical street corner, a payphone. Nowadays, not so much. 
Um, now we have home phones, and we use home phones for communication. We still have pay phones, sure, but it's not our only means of communication. And now, the pay phone is Nathan our only means of communication. We have this thing, the cell phone. Now, again, same process, evolution, evolution uh, pay phones, home phone, cell phone. What about film? Well, back in the 1930s, uh, this is what you would see on a film set. Nowadays, that's probably pretty laughable. We now have this, a camcorder, which is a lot more modern. Let's look at a, the simplest example, football helmets. Now, back when football first just got started, we used to um, strap rubber helmets to our football players. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to go onto the football field with a rubber helmet. It doesn't seem very safe to me. doesn't seem like it would protect my head very well. And a lot of other people thought that too, so now we use metal helmets. A lot more safe, a lot more secure, it protects against concussions a lot better. So the, all four of these examples the same process of evolution, the same process of the old being replaced with the new. Um, I could go on and on and on. There's hundreds of thousands of examples of this throughout history. Back in 1936, this beast was invented. The, Z, the Z1. The Z1 was invented by Conrad Zuse. Um, it's considered by many to be the first programmable working computer. It's not very elegant, I get that. It takes up an entire room, but, you know, it works. It's the first computer. And that was it for about 40 years. There was no major advances in computing technology for about 40 years. Fast forward 40 years, though. The MIS Corporation puts out this thing, the RTA 8800, considered by many to be the world's first personal computer. The first computer at a low enough price point that the average Joe Schmo off the street can walk into a store, buy this, take it home, and use it. Then, in 1977, Apple absolutely revolutionized the game, crushed the game with this thing, the Apple II. Now this is modern day computing almost at its finest. Apple II absolutely put a new face on the game. So um, at the beginning of this year we got even more advanced. The IBM Corporation put out this, the IBM PC. This is very modern. Alright guys, this is like modern day technology at its finest. Many of you are looking at me right now like, what is your point, Adam? Did you just bring us here to give us a history lesson on things we already knew? I promise, I promise I have a point and I promise I'm gonna give you that point right now. My point is that technology is constantly evolving. Every aspect, every facet of technology is constantly evolving. But as great and as wonderful as that evolution is, the one thing we do not have in the world of computing is a way to take your computer with you. With you to work, with you to school, with you to wherever you need to take it. So, what do you do? Well, now there is a way to take your computer with you. You can take it with you wherever and whenever you need to go. So, let me introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, the world's first portable computer, the future of computing as we know it, the Osborne One. Yes, this computer has very impressive specs, specs that will rival our strongest competitors. But it's not about the specs, is it? It's about the computer. It's about the feeling that you get when you get your com 
first Osborne won, and you realize that you can take it anywhere. You can take it to school, you can take it to work, you can take it wherever you need to go, wherever you need to complete your work. Just pack up your Osborne One, leave your house, take it with you, unpack it at your destination, and voila, you have a computer at your fingertips that you can use. You have all your saved papers. You have everything you need to complete your work. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the point. And that is the future of computing. So, my name is Adam Osborne. I want to thank, thank each and every one of you for coming out tonight for listening to my presentation. I hope you learned a little something. I hope you're as excited as me and everyone else at Osborne Computing is about the Osborne One. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and have a good night.